see it's Kenneth from the archives here with another video dipping into our collections and having a look at the history of the University of Dundee. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing one of our lesser known predecessor institutions, the Dundee School of Economics. Now, you may well recognise this building. It's Bonner House in Bell Street and is now part of the High School of Dundee. You may remember that it was once a university building, but did you know that it was originally built and opened as the Dundee School of Economics? Now, the Dundee School of Economics had a relatively short lifespan and is not terribly well remembered today, but it was an important institution in its day and it was important in the development of the University of Dundee. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about its origins and about its development. Our story really starts back in 1919. It was in this year that the textile magnate George Bonner offered the University of St Andrews £25,000 to institute a faculty of commerce at University College Dundee. Bonner's idea was that this would teach business subjects to students, but it would also open up education to people that maybe didn't have the traditional background or level of qualifications to get into university and would offer business qualifications. Now this posed some difficulties for the University of St Andrews and while the proposal was keenly received in Dundee, many in St Andrews were concerned about how this would fit in with St Andrews academic structure. So there was quite a lot of debate and the scheme was discussed for a number of years. Um, by the 1920s though it was becoming pretty clear that although there was plenty in Dundee in favour of it, James Irvin, the principal of the University of St Andrews, was not in favour of it. And that was a view that a lot in St Andrews had sympathy with. So in 1927, Bonner tried another tack. He said he was going to give £40,000 to found a school of commerce in Dundee, or a college of commerce. It was going to be done in conjunction with the local education authority, which a few years later was taken over by the town council becoming the education committee of the town council and this is the scheme that happened um, and in 1930 they just chose the name for it it was going to be dundee school of economics and commerce the commerce bit eventually dropped off uh, and it was opened in 1931. the inaugural address was given by sir josiah stamp who was a well-known economist and businessman uh, being heavily involved with the london midland scottish railway for example he was also probably chosen because his brother was the renowned economist L. Dudley Stamp of the London School of Economics, and he had been involved in consultations about how to set up the school in Dundee and how it should develop. The other person that was in the, presided over the introduction was the chairman of the Education Committee of the Town Council, Garnet Wilson, who earlier on the Education Authority had been a great supporter of the scheme, and indeed plays an important part in the development of the University of Dundee through his association with University College, but that perhaps is a story for another day. So it was in October 1931 that the college launched. Its principal was James Alexander Bowie. He was a very popular figure in the college uh, and indeed in the town as a whole. He, very, he saw that the School of Economics should be linked in with the town. He believed, as well as being there to provide an education, it was there to help businesses in Dundee and was committed to developing this link. Now, it wasn't great in terms of size of students or in terms of numbers of staff. Here we can see Bowie and some of the original staff in 1931 in the picture on the left. And on the right is a later group of staff and students, probably from the mid 1930s. As well as Bowie, there were several other distinguished staff. Um, Easton, who eventually succeeded Bowie as principal when Bowie died in 1949. We also had Ronald Coase, a name you might well have heard. He was a member of staff in the early days, but of course went on to be one of the most renowned economists of the 20th century, became a Nobel Prize winner, uh, and eventually died in 2013, well over 100. Quite a remarkable figure. We also had people like S.G. Edgar Lye, the economic historian, who of course went on to be an academic at Queen's College uh, and the University of Strathclyde, again a very well-known figure. So it attracted its fair share of talent. 
Now, right from the start, Bowie and many people associated with the School of Economics felt that the way forward was cooperation with University College Dundee. Uh, and when Principal Wimberley came to University College Dundee after the Second World War, he also favoured coordination between the various educational, further and higher educational institutes in Dundee, including the School of Economics. But the problem was St Andrews, and particularly Principal Irvin, was very much against this. Now, the future of university education in Dundee was a hot topic throughout the 1930s, and particularly in the years immediately following the Second World War. And this eventually led to Lord Tedder, who we see in the picture on the left there, being appointed to chair a royal commission into the subject of university education in Dundee. And that started in 1951, reported back in 1952, and its recommendations were implemented in 1954. Now, the big one was it reorganised University College into Queen's College Dundee, also putting the medical faculty in Dundee completely under the control of Queen's College. But one of the other things it recommended was that the School of Economics should come in and be part of Queen's College. And this happened uh, in 1955, it officially took place. And it wasn't just economics, because the School of Economics also taught subjects related to economics, like history. And it was decided that the School of Economics would form the basis of a School of Social Studies. And this eventually evolved into the Faculty of Social Sciences and Letters, and eventually became Dundee's Faculty of Arts and Social Science, uh, and is the descendant of a number of the ancestor of a number of the schools at the university today. So it became a very important part of the college in 1955. Now, Bonner House itself, this is the library in Bonner House, uh, photographs from the 60s, we think on the right, and probably the 70s on the left. What happened to Bonner House? Well, first of all, when the School of Economics ceased to be, it got the name Bonner House because they wanted to commemorate George Bonner. And it was the basis for the School of Social Studies. But of course, it was quite remote from the rest of the university campus. So eventually, the social sciences were allowed to move on to the university campus when the tower building was built. So what did we do with it then? Well, we needed somewhere for law. So the, in the 1960s, law became the new tenants of Bonner House. And indeed, the Faculty of Law remained there until 1978, when with the Scrimger building, as it became becoming available to the university, it too was able to move on campus, and it was decided then to sell Bonner House, and it was taken over and became part of the High School of Dundee. But Bonner's legacy was not forgotten. The Chair of Economics and the Chair of History to this day are the Bonner Chair, and that reflects their origins from Bonner and the School of Economics. It was also around this time the university was embarking on a building project of a new university hall, Bonner Hall, as it would become, because it felt we wanted something still to have the Bonner name. OK, I hope you've enjoyed this short video and found it interesting. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk again soon.